Hello everyone and we are back for another video and right now we are in Glasgow um, visiting a castle or remains of a castle but what you're looking at is Crookston um, it's taken me an hour and 55 minutes so basically two hours to get here but it, it was good for the hike for me so I'm not going to complain but yeah this is where we are and as you can see probably through the trees over there there is the castle so let's try and find a way in Obviously there's no proper path, so I'm going to have to guess my way in. There has to be a way in somewhere. And the floor's a bit wet and damp at the moment, so don't want to slip over. Not just like that. I'm using a selfie stick at the moment, so I'm hoping it's not too bumpy. I'm just making my way around where the castle is there to see if there's a way in. Rain has been on and off today, so I'm not. I'm hoping it's not too bad of rain. But yeah, this is an adventure. This is something I've been wanting to do. And I just thought today, why don't I just walk it? So we're coming onto a path of sorts. Yeah, this is better. Oh. Some form of path. Just think, guys, you're sitting on your sitting in your chairs or on your bed or sofa <sighs> having another two hour hike back home I don't mind doing it it was good for my mental health but yeah things I do for YouTube ah uh, there we are see that there's the tower there's the castle I do like, I do love visiting castles. I don't think many people will be around today because weather's not been great, but yet again it is Scotland and people are Scottish. I like to be out and about. Now that tower over there, I have no idea what it is. I'm going to try and find out what it is on Google Maps. And if it's abandoned, that'll be another place to add onto the list. It's just in the middle of a suburb area, seeing a tower like that, it's a bit odd. But yeah, I think this path to the left is leading up to the castle, so... Let's follow it. It's just begun to spit with rain. Shouldn't be so bad though. I have no, I don't know what the history of this castle is. So it's going to be interesting to find out. Someone's house, living on the castle grounds. But this is a lovely place. Really a lovely place. Mountains in the background there. Tower. 
Looks like some sort of hospital. Yeah. Let's go. I take it we can come here. Oh yeah. Crookston Castle. Admission is free. Let's go. Been a bit of a hike here, to be honest, guys. Oh, yeah, you can see uh, so Crocs Castle. This ditch was dug to hinder attacks on the earlier timber castle built by Sir Robert Croc in the 1100s. His fortress stood where the stone castle is now, probably surrounded by a bristling wooden palisade. Right is the seal of Sir Robert Crook Crookston, literally Cro Crockstown, gets its name from the first owner. There's the sigil there. And then, yeah, so this, and this, was a, a, a moat. old-fashioned stone path there but there's the castle it's just begun to rain but I'm just gonna risk it hopefully it doesn't affect the camera I expected this to be small, but it's bigger than I thought it was. Welcome to Crookston Castle. As you can see, that's what it, what it looked like inside. I want to read this for you. Over the centuries, the castle has served as an imposing fortress, family home, artist's muse, and wartime observation post. Distinctive design, this great stronghold was built in the 1400s, either by Sir John Stuart of Darnley or by his father, Alexander. Its design was unique. Four small towers built around a large central one. After life, siege and centuries have taken their toll, leaving only the central and northeast towers intact. In the 1700s, this romantic ruin attracted the attentions of writer Robert Tanner Hill and Sir Walter Scott. Legends were born, yarns were spun, including the famous tale of Mary Queen of Scots meeting a suitor Henry, Lord Darnley, here in the castle grounds. Hmm. I wonder if that's true. Above is a picture of Robert of John Stuart, possible builder of Croxton, was a celebrated military hero, famously leading French and Scottish forces to victory at the Battle of Bourget in 1421. Legend has it that Mary Queen of Scots had a romantic encounter here with Henry, Lord Darnley, who became her second husband. Torch, get my torch out in case 
you can't see and I can't see. Entrance. The only one. This was small and securely protected by an outer iron gate. Um, a particulars and an inner door secured by a drawbar. Draw oh, so this is the only door. This could have been some sort of hall. But I'm more impressed by the craftsmanship of the ceiling. It's amazing. Steps going up to that little window. You know what, I didn't... Oh, some more steps. I didn't have much thought for this place. But I'm impressed. Well room with a hoist socket and conduit providing water to the kitchen. Oh, okay. This was well. This was a well made castle. These were clearly lookout. I'm trying to pretend I know what I'm on about, guys. That was to the other tower. A vital store, okay. A cavernous vault was once stocked full of provisions to feed Darnley Stewart and their guests. So this was a story. The Lord's Horde, salted meat, fish, game, probably hung on hooks from the ceiling below. From the ceiling, below supplies were piled high, casks of butter, cheese and preserves, barrels of ale, wine and casket, and baskets of fruit and sacks bursting. Okay, look for the blocked doorways that lead into the vaults of two corner towers destroyed during the 1489 siege. A later cupboard has been inserted into a stonework to your right. A poor substitute for the lost storage beyond the archway. So that is storage, is it? Oh, wow. So that used to be the doorway to the other tower. There used to be a tower there. Okay. Amazing. Let's carry on. It's very dark in here. another room isn't it? So this could be another storeroom. Oh in the basement, vaulted basement used mainly for storage just as I said here. Yeah. But I love, well, just have a look through there. I love the vaulted ceilings here. It's really good, really nice. question is, how do we get up to the top of the tower? Have I missed anything around here? Just having another look around, guys. No. No. 
now. Okay. Let's, let's walk around the rest. Ah, there we are. Up there. I'm honestly surprised at this castle. Obviously we've just been down there. out onto the town. Yeah, this looks like some sort of main hall. Feasts and festivities. The banqueting hall was once busy, bright and full of people enjoying the lavish hospitality of the Darnley Stuarts. So this was a banqueting hall. Crookston celebrations. Most of the time the family dined in their private up, upper hall, which was located overhead. But this, so, over there. But this lower hall was, ven was the venue for large feasts and celebrations. The space would have been richly decorated with tapestries on the walls and enamel floor tiles underfoot. Music and laughter would have echoed in the lost vaulted ceiling. The feasts followed a strict etiquette. Seating was a reign, was organized by rank with the Lord and his favored guests at the high table in front of the fireplace. The room's only source of heat, the menu was determined by status, dictating how many courses each person received and what they got to eat. Don't be miss, as you leave the hall, Look out for this historic graffiti, a reminder of Crookston's service as an anti-aircraft observation post during World War... Oh, wow! During World War II. The initials EAC and JDC were carved by members of the Home Guard on Christmas Eve 1942. Okay, I'm, we're going to have to have a look out for that one. To the left of the fireplace are two carved stone shields. One of these probably contained the Darnley Stuart coat of arms, though we don't know which generation of the family left his, his mark here. The outer shell probably bore his wife's coat of arms, their bright heraldic colours shining in the firelight. The doorway to the right of the fireplace led up to the family's private quarters. So that's what it probably would have looked like. So let's find that uh, Second World War carving. So what does it say as you leave the hall? So that used to be a fireplace, a massive fireplace. Ah, oh, so the cupboards. Thank you. 
trying to find. find it but anyway let's let's go on do my torch out again it's carvings here could that be it This, this used to be the toilet. Let's go up. Ooh. Trying to balance on a spiral staircase is very hard. Further steps, I think, going up. Just gotta be careful. Block stairs originally led to the upper room. Ah, so you can't go any further. Let's just go down here. Oh, we can go further. But let's just focus on this room. Little fireplace. War room. You are now in the northeast tower. Its concrete floors and iron ladders date. Oh, so this dates from the Second World War when Crookston was in use as an anti-aircraft observation post. Manned by the Home Guard before that, this room was the Lord's bedchamber. Wow, I had no idea this, was, this tower was used as an observation post. It's so interesting. Let's uh, go up. Can go up. Just holding on. Just gotta be careful. These steps aren't that safe. Okay, we're in another room. Kind of a arched ceiling. Fireplace. So you can see it better. would have been another floor of the tower. Sadly it's 
gone now. Huh. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay. Just put my torch back in my pocket. Let's go. I'm going to have to swap hands because we run out of railing. Sorry for the shaky camera work, guys. Okay. Another room like this, but we're going higher. For that view. Another floor. Just I just had no idea it's another fireplace that this was an observation post. Gosh, the amount of history in here. Let's go up here. This is a proper adventure. I had, I didn't expect this. <sighs> Small way through. Oh my gosh! It is a, a squeeze. Show you what I just came through then. That wow, this is incredible. We're actually on top of the tower. So what does this say? It's Mary Queen of Scots. Legend has it that Mary Queen of Scots had a romantic rendezvous with her future husband, Henry Lord Darnley, beneath the shade of a Crookston yew tree. That's a Crookston yew tree. Artistic license. Darnley's family owned Crookston, and it is possible that Mary visited here in the summer of 1565. However, the courtship story probably dates from the 1700s, when writers and poets were spinning yarns inspired by romantic runes. So Walter Scott is one of the authors who embellished Crookston's connections, Mary's Crookston connection, sorry, in his novel The Abbot. He describes the Queen wanting the Battle of Langside, watching the Battle of Langside from beneath the Crookston yew tree. In 1568, the battle site now Battlefield Road, oh wow, in central Glasgow is ahead of you in the distance. In reality, Mary could not have seen. No, she couldn't, just look. The tree's there. But, guys, I'm honestly amazed by this. I came here not expecting much, and I found a little proper gem. Obviously, you can see. I'm on top of a tower. <laughs> I'm on top of a tower. It's 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 mad. So yeah. I think that's it really for this video. I'm going to do a little walk, a few shots to show you on the outside, but that's it from me on this explore. So guys, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Um it's a bit different, but I hope you liked it. If you did, please press the like button. Please comment on this video if you'd like any more 
adventures to castles that I can visit because there's a load which was on my list let me know if this is something you're interested in and if you haven't and you want to please press the subscribe button this is your channel as much as it is mine and to those of you who have already subscribed I just want to say a heartfelt thank you so much I could not be here without you you guys can make this channel that's it for me in this video my name is Dan I'll see you in the next video. Peace.